Hi, my name is Professor Chris Daniels and I'm the presiding member of the Green Adelaide Landscape Board. And I'd like to welcome you to our bid to become the second of the world's national park cities. I'm here in Adelaide, which is the capital of South Australia, which is the central and southernmost state in the Commonwealth of Australia. And Adelaide's a remarkable city. It has the population of about 1.3 million people. And it's located in a beautiful little green island ringed by the Mount Lofty Ranges. It was established in 1836 as a province of the United Kingdom. This area had a remarkable set of different microenvironments from grassy woodlands um, to open grasslands to thick forests and to streams and creeks. Much of this area was cleared initially for farmland and since the start of the 20th century, we have been working very hard to green up the city. The term National Park City is really important to us as Adelaideans because of the hard work we have done over the last 120 to 150 years to take a fairly devastated landscape and create a magnificent park environment. Some 30% of the Greater Adelaide area consists of open spaces. Much of it is our front yards and our backyards and we also have remnant vegetation and set piece parks. And this is the home of the green of the city of Adelaide. And this green consists of introduced plants, of native plants, and of a very spectacular collection of Australia's biodiversity. This diversity includes our wonderful, colourful parrots, it includes the iconic koala, and we hope soon will be a number of other major species such as platypus brought back to our local environment. So this is an opportunity for us to share with the world how wonderful this city is and in so doing improve tourism and visitation to the area and also be able to connect our community with the wonderful open space that we have here. We have a magnificent environment, less than 60 days a year are rainy days, we have beautiful blue skies and we have the opportunity to get outside and to exercise and to socialise in this magnificent environment. And that's an enormous benefit. And recognising this benefit is great for us, is great for the state, showcases the great advantages that Australia has to offer the world, and hopefully encourage you to come and visit us and spend some time with us in these magnificent spaces. As part of our bid to become the second national park city, the Green Adelaide Landscape Board has been working hard to create a summary to engage our local community about what makes Adelaide so special. And here's some of the things that we are doing in this city right now. I'm delighted to introduce you to Green Adelaide. Our vision is to create a cooler, greener, wilder, more climate resilient city. We know we are losing our natural spaces through the increased number of houses and the increased size of houses. And there are also many other threats, including habitat loss and also climate change. So Green Adelaide is here to deliver change to help save the nature of the city. And we're doing this in two ways. We're doing it by leading on-ground activities by supporting grassroots actions uh, to support nature, to support our specific environments in the region, and to help and educate the community about the love of nature. And we are also here to partner with a wide range of organisations. And these include our 17 metropolitan councils, and also the Ghana people, the First Nations, and a wide range of other organisations, community groups, and individuals. Green Adelaide is here to make a difference. So I'm very pleased to be able to introduce my board members and they will tell you more about our seven priorities. Coastal management is one of the priorities of the Green Adelaide Board. Thousands of years ago, coastal dunes like this fringed the metropolitan beaches of Adelaide. Here at the Tennyson Dunes, the moment you walk over the rise, you see the beautiful blue of the sea, but stop. Have a look around you. There's beautiful living creatures in and amongst these tea trees and in the sand dunes. These environments are home to invertebrates, to special native plants and animals. In particular, we're very, very keen 
to keep preserving the beautiful hooded plover that makes its nest along the coastline. You could get involved with being in that program and looking after them. They're a threatened species. If you'd like to join the Coastal Ambassadors, they do wonderful work on those beautiful cold water reefs and looking at the riverine and marine environment interaction. I'm here in Windsor Gardens where a lot of work has been done to regenerate this beautiful area and to improve the water quality of our much loved torrents. We would love everybody to get involved in looking after our wetlands, our lakes and our rivers for nature and also for ourselves and our children and our grandchildren. Green Adelaide is doing a lot of work in areas like this. We're planting native plants and we're removing weeds. And we've got some big projects as well, like Breakout Creek to the west and Lower Field River to the south. Here we are in a beautiful tree-lined street in the leafy suburb of St Peter's, just to the east of the CBD. The trees in this street provide a really lovely cooling effect throughout the summer and also provide a great habitat for native birds and animals. Green Adelaide provides grants to communities and councils so that we can have more leafy streets like this throughout the whole of the metropolitan area. This rain garden on Leader Street is improving the look of the street, but it's also providing important habitat and cleaning our stormwater before it heads into our oceans, rivers and creek systems. Green Adelaide is about celebrating nature-friendly streets and creating more nature-friendly neighbourhoods across metropolitan Adelaide. You can help by planting native plants, by composting your soils, by putting in rainwater tanks, adding solar to your roof, picking up litter, reusing your waste. There's lots of things you can do and Green Adelaide is here to help. Who doesn't love Adelaide Zoo? But it's easy to forget there are many animals living outside of Adelaide Zoo too like the threatened grey-headed flying fox that you can see hanging about trees all around Adelaide's parklands. We need more natural habitats for our plants and animals to thrive in, so people and nature can have a better quality of life. Green Adelaide is helping by funding research projects to protect threatened species like the flying fox and working with councils, volunteers and landholders on pest control and habitat restoration works. I'm here at the River Torrens at Fulham Gardens, which is a beautiful place to walk your dog or to go for a bike ride. We need to understand our weeds and our pests like this little guy, the mosquito fish, and find ways that we can help protect our native wildlife as well as the water quality in our rivers. Green Adelaide is here to help with funding projects to remove weeds and to control pests. We are also providing nature education for the whole of Adelaide to learn more about these problems. Nature education isn't just for kids, it's for all of us as human beings. And I'm here in Elizabeth Grove at Joe's Connected Garden, an amazing array of different plants and species and a beautiful place to learn about nature, our connection to it and how we might care for it better. At Green Adelaide, we're partnering with schools and organisations to help all of us understand the beautifully connected role that we have with our natural environment. And that means running backyard gardening workshops, getting out into nature, really enjoying the beautiful environment that we're all lucky to have here in Adelaide. This board has been created to support Adelaide becoming a cooler, greener, wilder, more climate resilient city. And that means bringing nature into our backyards, into our spaces and part of our lives. In fact, if we think about nature, we could think about Adelaide as a park. So we're thinking, why don't we make Adelaide a national park city? So what is a national park city? Obviously, we're not going to be turning this all into a big remnant forest. But what it does mean is that we are creating nature as part of our lifestyle. So the community can actively engage with nature in their backyards, along their streets, in their parks, and to use waterways like this one here at Mitcham. I think that it would be really exciting for Adelaide to become a national park city because it would be a really good way for everyone to become a closer community and to have a stronger relationship with nature, which is a really good way to help people's well-being, which I think would be 
a great way to make the city more lively and fun in the future. So this is an opportunity for us to embrace nature as part of our culture and our heritage. It's a really exciting way to think about how we build communities, to understand the relationship between our plants, our animals and ourselves. I'm also an urban ecologist and I'm talking about urban ecology in what I think is one of the most important and beautiful streets in the city of Adelaide. And it's not Frome Road, and it's not Victoria Avenue, and it's not Watuna Terrace. In fact, it's not a road at all. It's a carriageway that runs through the South Parklands. And this carriageway is incredibly important. It was established, some argue, as early as the late 1860s, uh, but was certainly developed by our first town planner, John Edney Brown. And he loved this carriageway and he saw in it the opportunity to green up our streets and our parklands and create street trees and boulevards. So he hired an amazing man, August Peltzer. And August Peltzer went on over 30 years to green the streets and to green the parklands and to green all of our public spaces. And this led us to create our first urban forest. We now have the opportunity to build on this fabulous work of Brown, of Peltzer, of Charles Reed, and of many of the early visionaries that created our urban city. And so we want to build on these, this opportunity. We want to create a national park city. And this is to bring even more nature back, to understand the role of nature in our backyards, and to connect with nature, and to really understand the role of pests and plants um, that are introduced and can cause problems. So there's a lot we can do, and we urge you to go to the website, to sign the charter, to get involved, to come up with ideas that will improve the National Park City and engage our community for nature. Hi, I'm Tobias Turner, a member of the Green Adelaide Board and also a Ghana representative to the board. Um, I'm here down by Karawira Parry, uh, also known as the Torrens River, just to talk about a National Park City. So Adelaide is built on the traditional country of the Ghana people, a 60,000 year old culture that celebrated its connection with the environment. By bringing First Nation people's voice to the forefront of our role in National Park City, we can bring back traditional practices that were once utilised in environmental landscape management. I'm calling all Adelaideans to get out in nature, connect with the culture and the people that have lived here for 60,000 years, the Ghana people. A major part of Adelaide becoming a national park city is for us as people to deepen our connections with nature through learning and exploring in the beautiful parts of this unique city. You know, we are unique. We're nestled between the Adelaide Hills and the stunning coastlines to the west. And there are so many opportunities for us in our communities to connect with nature as we connect with each other. And that really is another opportunity here to, to acknowledge and to celebrate the amazing Ghana culture that's been part of this land for tens of thousands of years and bring in the new cultures as well so that we can all understand each other at deeper level and enjoy this environment together. So really what this is, is an invitation for each of us to take the amazing opportunity that National Park City offers us, to learn more about our environment, to discover what it is we want to share and to be able to take our vision collectively and turn it into a reality so that we can enjoy this beautiful part of the world together. Hi, I'm Claire. I'm in the beautiful Alberton Primary School community garden right here in Queenstown. The contributions from individuals, groups and businesses and governments and other organisations is what drives Adelaide to become a national park city. We have across our urban landscape a passionate community full of ideas and an Adelaide is a national park city is a common goal we can all contribute to. It's not about waiting to be asked, it's about being involved. It's about putting your idea out there, connecting with others and making it happen. Becoming a National Park City is as much about celebrating our city's natural environments as it is about the people embracing the vision for our future. For our entire city, from the hills to the coast, to the northern plains to the southern vales, it's about contributing, about making life better for ourselves, our friends, our families and our local neighbourhoods. I get to see and hear about examples of community action happening almost every single day. From school students learning about their local environment, neighbours starting community gardens, businesses investing in more sustainable practices and local and state government partnering on projects to drive Adelaide's livability credentials. 
We are so thankful for the contributions from individuals, groups, businesses, governments and other organisations that will drive Adelaide to become a national park city. We have across our urban landscape such a passionate community. We're full of ideas and Adelaide National Park City is the common goal and we can all contribute to it. It's not about waiting to be asked to be involved. It's about putting your idea out there, connecting with others and let's make it happen. I encourage everyone, the young, the young at heart, let's think about how we can make a difference, connect with and protect, enhance and celebrate nature. Let's make Adelaide the world's second national park city. Our bid to become the second national park city has been incredibly supported by our local community. Thousands of people have signed the charter and we have hundreds of ambassadors and champions actively supporting this bid. Now you're going to hear from several of our local community members who are actively involved in making a difference, in changing the city to become healthier, wilder and greener and enable us to spend more time outside doing some great and wonderful things. Adelaide, there's so many great things going on um, which are connecting our communities um, and we can see that we're all valuing our natural environment. My name is Paige and I work at the Adelaide Sustainability Centre. The Adelaide Sustainability Centre is an environmental hub which um, supports the community to live sustainably and to connect to nature. And we do that in a range of different ways. So we have resources and displays to help people to find out more. We have a range of events uh, so people can learn new skills um, and learn about new ideas. And we also have different projects which pilot um, environmental initiatives and ideas in the community. We're based in the city and we have lots of different people from our local environment engaging this centre as well. So here we have a community garden uh, in the, at the centre and um, this is run by local residents that live in apartments close by. They wanted to extend their gardens that they had on their balconies so they um, yeah, come here and, and manage the garden. The events that we run uh, range in different uh, activities, so including gardening, uh, how to create a wildlife friendly garden, how to reduce your water and energy, uh, how to find out more about Ghana language and lots of other ways. The way we impact community is by connecting them to each other and to ways that they can find out more about ways uh, to connect to the environment and to protect it. We have people coming and visiting and attending events from all over South Australia and we also can see that with some of our online events now people are participating from all over the world so people can uh, find out more on our website and social media as well. The centre brings people together so that they can find out more about information and pathways and community action groups that they can connect with. The Adelaide Sustainability Centre is currently doing a range of projects uh, including a library of things and uh, repair cafes where people can uh, find out more about reducing their waste and consumerism and connect with other people in their local community. People come into the centre to find out how they can reduce their environmental impact so um, that includes ways of you know, reducing their water um, and their energy in their homes and their backyards and they can also find out about local plants um, and wildlife and how that they can um, bring that nature into their own backyards and local communities. I think everybody um, has an opportunity to find out more and there's always pathways um, that people can take so that might be connecting to a a local group that they didn't know existed or adopting a simple behaviour change that helps them to live more sustainably that they didn't realise that they could do. To me, living in a national park city is um, where everybody is connected and living sustainably and living healthy lives and valuing our natural environment. The Adelaide Sustainability Centre is making a difference because we can see that people are learning more and adopting more sustainable behaviour change and they're also going back into their communities and chatting to their friends and family about how they can do the same. And we can also see that they're more likely to find out what's going on in their local neighbourhood and connect to natural spaces and to community groups that are doing great things. 
I think we can build on that momentum as a national park city and continue to um, live sustainable um, and healthy lives together. Geoffrey Newchurch, uh, Chair of the Ghana Yurta Aboriginal Co Corporation, and the most important thing, creating and building relationships that last into our future generation, grandchildren, their children, with Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people. So the naming of parks in Ghana, co-naming in other parks around the state, that co-naming, that gives very importance, that gives that strength of ownership to us all, to Aboriginal communities from elders down to young people. It gives that connection to country where we tell that story. But we tell that story, most importantly, together. We gave that opportunity where we care for that country, together. This is this togetherness that is highly critical, highly important. And to be valued in that is the way forward. It's the way that we, as a community, Aboriginal, non-Aboriginal, governments, private sector, place most importantly our environment by looking after our environment we start to heal together the reality of being here is it's about that opportunity that position in in the environment to be there from the top of, of getting that opportunity to make decisions to build succession planning into the future to to, to make certainty that our Aboriginal people and our non-Aboriginal people are coming together to work together to achieve activity, to achieve those outcomes that benefit us as a community, to build a succession plan, to build the best ideal position for Adelaide as a great city, as an environmental city, to be able to enjoy the spaces, to intermingle together, to intermingle between built position of, 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 of the cities, of, of the township, to, to marry that with the environmental sector, to have those moments where we can share that. So it's a very privileged position, but most of all than being privileged, it's a position of, of togetherness. We as a community must look after them, so we become custodial guardians into the future of our environment and marrying that with, you know, our kitchen table and our land room where we can, we can escape that to have the beauty to these spaces which are hidden gems where the value comes into us, where it allows us to heal our souls, to heal together as a community and yeah, really, really opportunity where we have got our environment and we have got ourselves. But we can't enjoy and we can't educate if we don't do it together. <laughs> My name's Craig Lovering, I'm a landscape architect and director at Clover Green Space. We are passionate designers and creators of green spaces. We work across a number of different sectors from main streets and streetscape upgrades, uh, housing, whether that be green fields, uh, medium density housing, aged care, affordable housing, education and play spaces and recreation, uh, as well as um, infrastructure and defence, which involves a lot of uh, rehabilitation and revegetation work. So we work across a number of different sectors, but advocate for, for greening of, of spaces and places. Today we're at M Suites in North Adelaide on Tint Street. Uh, this is a project that we started uh, about four years ago. It was a couple of years in the making. We work very closely with the client, uh, the developer, who was keen to build a development of quality and to raise the bar and respond to the beautiful um, elements of North Adelaide and to uh, really complement Wellington Square, to complement the beautiful streetscapes. And we worked very, very closely to, to shape that vision, to shape that brand and to completely cover the entrance, a two-storey green wall and entrance to the hotel. Uh, a year on, it's a wonderful outcome. Plants are growing beautifully. People are talking about it as they walk past. People are taking photos. So I think it's been a really valuable addition to the street. Every project is different. Um, for example, a streetscape project, we 
need to really analyse in-ground services as to uh, where water and electrical and, and all of these kinds of things are because you can't always put a street tree where you want to put it. Um, buildings sometimes um, uh, are filling out an entire property and uh, we can't fit trees into those projects so that's where we need to look at uh, vertical greening and, and other methods to try to still achieve that green outcome where we can't fit traditional methods. Adelaide has a Mediterranean climate, so we have long, hot summers that are quite dry, and then we have wet winters, wet and cold winters. And look, the impacts of climate change have been that we have longer periods of drought, um, but then more intense storms and rainfall happens more in intense periods. So that puts uh, pressures on stormwater drainage and those kinds of things. So. Uh, I guess those more extreme events place a greater stress on trees uh, to, to get through those long periods of drought. So establishing trees and getting good root systems developed uh, creates a more resilient urban forest and, and trees uh, have a, a, a tighter structure in the ground to, to resist against storm activity and higher winds. and. Uh, we work on a lot of hills projects uh, where we have a very, very cold and frosty winter where I guess plant selections are, uh, need to cope with those things. But we also work a lot across the Adelaide Plains as well where we have uh, really dense clay soils that don't drain. Uh, we have uh, a hotter urban heat island effect that we need to deal with where I guess the, the hard surfaces uh, soak up the heat during the day and then re-radiate that heat at night. So our job is to try to establish canopy cover over those hard surfaces to, to cool things during the day so people can still sleep at night and um, they're not running their air conditioners for 24 hours a day. So greening plays multiple uh, valuable roles across uh, the sustainability um, uh, sphere. Adelaide really punches hard on the national and global scale of our commitment to greening and preserving our open spaces, preserving our existing trees, our river red gums, our really important native and endemic trees. Uh, we enjoy this lifestyle and set a global example about technology, use of technologies, sustainable transport modes with uh, bikeways and, and promoting cycling, use of trams and, and public transport as well. Adelaide has a, a small um, but very, very motivated group of professionals to, to really build this national park city and councils, local authorities, state government have set targets for increasing tree canopy cover. Uh, every council has their own tree planting strategies that we all work with on a daily basis and it's with all of these elements that Adelaide will uh, be able to achieve that, that national park city outcome and connect all of these projects connect all of these streets, connect all of these open space strategies together. Becoming a national park city would mean a lot to me. It would mean the work that we're doing is being recognised. It would mean that the efforts, the investment from clients, the, the commitment from authorities and the collective will and efforts of everybody are recognised and we're, we're driving around Adelaide, we're enjoying the lifestyle in Adelaide. It's creating a future legacy that uh, future generations can enjoy, that new businesses are coming to, that we're a prosperous place and we can be proud. We're celebrating this on a global scale and people are envious of the lifestyle, of uh, the quality of, uh, of, of spaces, the, the temperature and cooling, like energy use. We already set the example for renewable energy use. And if we can achieve more greening outcomes, more uh, sustainably planned and designed places, then that National Park City element is a, is a lovely overarching collective banner for, for Adelaide as a, as a very green city. Mierna Namani Puriji, Nai Nariyatu, Na Karamiro, Na Garna Narinjere Yankurinjere Yarta, Nai Wangani, Marni Naburni, Garna Yarta, Tawala Yarta, Nature Yakundalia, Yakurundalia, Nachalia. So, uh, greetings, uh, my name is Alan Sumner. I'm the first born son in my family. Uh, I was born here on Ghana country, 
but uh, my family was also born on Ngarindjeri country and um, my nana was born in the APY lands. Um, I said that it is good that we are all here on Ghana country and um, you know we recognize this today um, so thank you. I'd love to introduce uh, the artwork uh, for Green Adelaide and um, it's just such a great opportunity uh, to be part of being able to create a beautiful piece of artwork for Green Adelaide. I guess my passion for artwork sort of came about in my early 20s and I, uh, I started doing artwork, you know, painting and things like that and I found it was really key in getting to know who I was culturally as an Aboriginal man. It strengthened my identity uh, through stories, through narratives, and the, and the stories of our old people being passed down, you know, and I think that's essential for uh, being able to pass on those Aboriginal or Indigenous knowledges. Um, I think it's sort of over the last 20 years, it's evolved from that 3D type of physical artwork and moving then more into more um, uh, the visual sort of um, vectorized art using Illustrator. And uh, I just found the world opened up for me there and uh, allowed myself to be a little bit more creative, to be able to tell the narratives the way I wanted to tell them in a more contemporary way of, of Aboriginal art. Gal Dalta Tandanya is how you pronounce the name. It is a Ghana name. And we thought it was uh, quite, I guess, relevant for what Green Adelaide are trying to achieve. So Gardaldla actually means in the Ghana language, the color of blue and green. And then of course, Tarandanya is the, the name of Adelaide. And the word Taranda actually derives from the word uh, from the big, it means a big red kangaroo, which uh, is obviously quite prominent and significant to Ghana people here on the Adelaide Plains and particularly uh, Adelaide. So we'll, the place obviously Tarandanya is what we call it. So really the name of Green Adelaide is, you know, Kaldalta uh, Tarandanya. We obviously looked at Green Adelaide as the focal point in the artwork. The work has been driven from Green Adelaide and, and goes out across the artwork really nicely. It obviously features the waterways through there, uh, the, the ponds, the lakes, our cultural flows that, that run through the artwork. We have then from Green Adelaide in the middle, is having our hand prints that come out from Green Adelaide because I guess these are the supporting systems that have been put in place and the work that actually comes out of Green Adelaide focused in different areas. Uh, there are also footprints, so talking about uh, people working on the ground, you know, walking on country, uh, connecting with people on the ground. The footprints are a vital factor in that. There are other footprints in there too, and they're footprints of animals such as the emu and the kangaroo. And, you know, of course, we have many other animals, of course. We wanted to feature uh, building structures, um, things that make up the city in a sense. And um, so we incorporated that into the artwork, very free flowing, but to, to make sure that there was plenty of trees, plants, a lot of stuff happening around the, the streets and the city. On the outer side of the artwork itself, we've got reflecting a lot of our parklands and um, you know the green spaces that have been made available for, for our community. I guess what we have taken is features, traditional features of Aboriginal artwork, but then sort of melded them together with more of a contemporary view as well. So showing what you've got is a snapshot of this beautiful piece of work in a, in a circle uh, with uh, Adelaide based in there, uh, our waterways, all the people working on the ground. And I guess the reason why it was a circle is because everything is connected. And what we do as people, you know, we, everything sort of works together. We can't just work on coastline stuff without working on other aspects of greening Adelaide. So to, to actually form a piece of artwork um, was quite complex in being able to capture all the different pieces of work that Green Adelaide do and to put that into one bit. But I think we got there and I'd love for people to get out of this is that, you know, once they see the artwork is that, you know, you can see that we're doing fantastic things in these spaces within Adelaide. And, um, you know, we are committed to, to re-greening Adelaide and uh, bringing, bringing nature back, bringing our animals back, bringing the diversity back and uh, making a, a fantastic place to, to live for um, residents of, of Adelaide.
My name is Pete and I'm a Strava artist. So Strava is where we uh, go for a ride or a run or a swim or a kayak. Uh, you record that with your GPS and when you get back and load that up, it looks like a wonderful picture. So the pictures I most like to do are usually little animals. Animals are my favorite thing, they're very cute. Um, they always get a lot of, uh, a lot of enjoyment from my, my viewership. They're usually pretty instantly recognizable. And what you can do with the animals is, is you can get these pictures to show a lot of movement in them. And that's, that's I think the skill in doing this stuff is getting these pictures from being a, a 2D trace around the city to being something that's really got life in it. Um, and you know, when I, see, when I see the reactions to my pictures, that's where I get the sense of fun from it. I like, uh, I like making, making people laugh. When I know what picture I want to make next for my Strava art, I'll, uh, I'll usually grab that picture, uh, drop it into some mapping software, and then essentially just trace that around uh, based on the, on the streets of Adelaide. Once I've got that ready to go, I load that onto my phone, chuck my phone on top of my bike, and uh, start riding, and basically just follow the lines, follow, join the dots, and um, make my pretty pictures. I like to try and find animals that are significant to Adelaide and, and really uh, talk to, to why it's good to be part of this national park city. Um, so animals that are often quite um, unique to Adelaide, I like to do. The other day I did a plesiosaur, which is like an underwater dinosaur. Uh, they were discovered um, some years ago, so that was pretty cool. Had some significance to the local area. I've also done potteroos and koalas and other little cute animals that uh, live around the place. Done a couple of, done a fox or two, which uh, were rabbits as well. Sometimes it's good to talk about the feral animals as well and how they impact on, uh, on the native ecology. When we did the koala, we got a number of uh, celebrities involved in that one as well. We got Phil Liggett, the international voice of cycling. He came with us and uh, so we were able to get that to a much wider audience and, and talk about what's going on with koalas uh, in the state and in the country and bring some attention to, to their plight. So that was one of my earliest Strava arts and that was uh, really good to, to show me what, what was possible through the, through the city streets and the st streets of Adelaide. Uh, we also picked up a lot of the, uh, the parklands on that koala. Um, so that was really nice to be able to experience, uh, particularly with international guests, uh, how much, how accessible Adelaide is and how much green we've got through the city. There's a lot of this movement throughout the world. Basically anywhere you can get a good GPS signal, people are doing GPS art. So we do share that internationally. There's, there's probably five or six guys, guys and girls that are doing really good artwork around the world uh, and a couple, of, um, a couple of sites that are promoting that really well. So yeah, that's a bit of fun as well. I like to think that when I'm, when I'm doing these pictures, people are seeing them and they're recognising, you know, particularly people that live in Adelaide around here, they're recognising their little streets and they're saying, hey, this guy just rode down my street to make this, this little koala. Um, and they sort of have that connection of seeing that, that, spatial, uh, that spatial recognition of how you can put all these things together to, to make these shapes. Adelaide is, is riddled with trails, um, tracks, shared use uh, paths. It's a really nice way to be able to get around on foot or on your bike. Um, you're absolutely not constrained to, uh, to being in a car in this city. Um, it, because it's so flat, it's really easy to, um, to pedal from one side to the other. No strain at all. Um, I know many, many people do commute by bike. That's kind of what I do with my art. I just take the long route to do it. Cycling and being active in this green space is one of the best things you can do for your mental health. It's a great way to um, just reset yourself after a long day. You can, um, you can get out there, get through this green space and really just ground yourself in, in the things that really matter. So just being out there and you know, enjoying the breeze on your face, it's just, it's just so refreshing and so such a good way to finish your day. So I love riding home um, after work. It's, it's the best thing to do. I think Adelaide can be a national park city because it has it has that uniqueness around what it what it provides for its community and what it allows people to do in the city, um, both through getting in touch with nature, uh, but also just through being able to move through the space comfortably and easily um, with, without too much impediment. To my mind, Adelaide already is a national park city. It's it's a beautiful place. We've got all this greenery. It's it's everything you want in a national park and we've got it here in our city, as our city. Listen that tree so the birds can fly to the tree. Yeah. And we could make a nest on the tree. That's yeah. a good idea. 
when you're young, you're often convinced, oh, I have to wait till I'm an adult to do things, but I think you, you can do lots of things when you're a kid and you, you don't have to wait. Even if it's just like a small community doing something, if everybody does it, it'll make a big difference. People create a nicer space and other people will kind of catch on and realise that they're actually benefiting. And nature's like a human. So if we like pull out a leaf, it's kind of like p p pulling out something from our body. Giving people a sense of belonging. So like, I feel like I belong to the river country. And I think that's something I've been taught to a lot of my Aboriginal friends. And I think that's something that if we can pass that down to the younger generation, that sense of who we are and why we belong to the place, rather than we live in a house away from nature, we should be belonging to nature. Myself as pretty helpful, helping clean Adelaide for this future, I actually feel very proud. My name's Natasha Davis and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Trees for Life, which is a South Australian environmental community organisation. Trees for Life works across the whole state to restore and protect our very precious landscapes. That's bushland and farmlands and also the urban landscapes of Greater Adelaide. At Trees for Life we have volunteers and supporters who do a range of activities that are already contributing to Adelaide being very well placed to be a national park city. So that involves a range of activities from growing native seedlings in our native plant nursery, planting native seedlings like the activity we've had here today. We have several hundred volunteers who grow native seedlings in their backyards every year. Those seedlings are distributed across the state for a range of different revegetation projects. Those seedlings are providing habitat for birds and animals. They're helping provide shelter for stock. Um, they're helping uh, waterways and soil and reducing salinity and also providing very important pollination services. So people right here in Adelaide are contributing to the protection and restoration of landscapes across South Australia. That's a program called the Tree Scheme which has been going for over 40 years and we have about 400 new growers this year who became passionate and wanting to help out after the terrible bushfires that we suffered in South Australia. So we've had a lot of people contact Trees for Life and want to know how they can help to put habitat back into our landscapes following the bushfires. And we have people who we support and train to do bush care, which is protecting uh, remaining native bushland that hasn't been cleared and removing those threats so that the native plants can thrive. A really important part of being a national park city is protecting the bushland that we have in place still. Adelaide used to be a grassy open woodland, which meant that there were trees, but a lot of native grasses. So what we do at Trees for Life is we find those patches which are remaining remnants of that grassland and sometimes woodland areas, and we find volunteers who'd like to care for that. So Adelaide's really lucky that we still have patches of bushland. So along the coast, in the foothills, and even in the Adelaide Plains, we've still got little patches of bush that have been there since before European settlement. So even in the Adelaide Parklands, which is right around the centre of Adelaide, we have three or four Bush for Life sites and we have passionate volunteers who go out there weekly to remove the weeds and to make sure those places remain very healthy and um, can actually grow and expand the remnant patches of bush that we have left. They adopt their areas and they become so committed to it. People who do that for decades and they, it's really important because having that sense of place and connection to nature is what makes us feel like we're part of a community and connected to the land that we love. Adelaide is a big city, it's, it stretches from far north down to the south. We have the coasts up until the hills. So there's a range of different habitat types and different types of uh, environmental projects. So we've got people involved in wetlands, dune care, or f projects that are in the foothills. Today we had the Surf Lifesaving Club working with Green Adelaide, the local council, a lions group and a business group, all coming together to plant native seedlings that we've grown in our local nursery. This is really important work because many of the dunes in South Australia's beaches have been eroded over time or cleared for development and to protect our beaches, particularly with climate change, we need to restore those dunes and put back some of the original vegetation that was there. It also provides habitat for some of the native species, the reptiles, birds, butterflies and other species that need um, habitat in order to survive. 
I love nature and I know that protecting biodiversity is absolutely critical. Just as we know climate change has to be at the heart of our decision making, biodiversity also has to be at the heart of our decision making. And nature is essential for our personal wellbeing and for our community wellbeing. What I would love to see is nature at the heart of all our decision making in Adelaide. So the planning and development decisions, uh, our transport decisions and all other things that make up our economic and social life. Think about where nature can be right in the middle of that. We need nature to be healthy as individuals. We need to have biodiversity, which is the very essence of life. And I think there are so many opportunities for Adelaide to lead the way. We know we're making a difference because we see the changes on the ground. We see native plants that are starting to come back and grow themselves, regenerating naturally. Uh, we see the habitat that's returning to these areas. We see birds, bees and butterflies. We take photo points so we can measure change over time and that's very empowering for the volunteers and the wider community to see the changes that their work has contributed to. We also measure the impact on people's lives because it's uh, helping our environment is very empowering. A lot of people love um, getting out and involved and being part of doing something that they know is bigger than themselves is making a really positive difference. And we also know through our surveys that it's having a very positive effect on people's physical and mental health. And our wellbeing is greatly enhanced by spending time in nature by being involved in environmental volunteering and by contributing to very worthwhile projects. We're very, very excited to be part of the National Park City movement. We're going to be getting more people involved in putting nature back into our city and into the other parts of South Australia. We have families, we have people who are new migrants, new, new arrivals in Australia. Um, we're more and more involving First Nations in our work and we, we have farmers, we have people from the city. We already have so many people who love nature and are really committed to helping protect our environment. If we make Adelaide a national park city, I think that's just gonna grow. We're gonna have more people who learn about why native plants, native flora and fauna are so important for our own health and for the health of our whole planet. We're gonna see more urban greening. We're gonna see more opportunities for people to get involved in practical act activities that really make a difference and really make Adelaide the most amazing place to live in the world. We now have the opportunity to build on this fabulous work now we want to be the second national park city in the world, adding to this, bringing more nature into this area and understanding the importance of nature for ourselves. So thank you for participating in our bid to become the second national park city. This bid has involved a huge number of people, of organisations and institutions all working together and collaborating to bring our story to you. And we want to hear from you too. So please comment or give advice or any other of your observations in the comments box below. This is incredibly exciting for us and we are really looking forward to bringing a city down under and its nature story to you and to the world. <laughs>